In the last video, we stepped through an example of the k-means clustering algorithm, looking at the different steps and how they're executed on a small data set. In this video, we're going to look at um, some more of the details of the algorithm, looking at how we can write out some of the steps a little bit more mathematically, and then also looking at what the loss is that this algorithm tries um, to optimize. Here on this side of the screen, I actually give the k-means clustering algorithm, and we will now look at it in a little bit more detail. To do that, we'll start with some notation. So what I will do is I will use capital letter C, um, subscript K, to denote the set of indices, set of indices of items assigned to cluster K. This means that this C little k is a set of indices, a set of, of numbers, and um, that set indicates which of the items in my data is assigned to cluster k. So for instance, we might have that, um, let's say C4, okay, which is the, would, would represent the fourth cluster, maybe has item number 205, item number 12, and item number, I don't know, 303, okay? So that means that um, our item, our, our data point, x, the 205th data point, is assigned to cluster number 4. Another bit of notation is just that um, when I write ck like this, this is the number of items, okay, in, um, in cluster k. Okay. So in this example, for instance, we will have that C4 is equal to 3, right? There are three items in that set. Okay, now with that bit of notation, let's look at the steps again. Um, we start by randomly putting each of the XNs, each of my items, into one of the K clusters. Okay, so that basically means that these sets will be randomly initialized. Okay. Um, if you take the combination of all of those sets, then that should give you all your training items. In step 2a, the algorithm says, for each of the clusters, calculate the cluster centroid mu k as the mean of all the items assigned to cluster k. Okay, so if we wanted to write that out uh, mathematically, what we could do is we could say, what we're doing is we're calculating the mean vector from the kth cluster. And we calculate that simply by adding up all of the items assigned to cluster K. Okay, so we're adding up. Remember that CK is the set of indices of items assigned to cluster K. So if I write I in CK, that's just all the indices of um, items assigned to cluster K. Okay, so we're adding up all of them. And then what we're doing is we're normalizing by the number of points in that cluster. Now let's look at step 2b, okay? So here what we do is we run through all of our items, all of the items in our data set from one to big N, okay? And then what we do is for each of the item, we look and we assign the closest centroid, okay? So what does that mean? That means that um, we've got all these items, maybe they're lying here, Okay, and then we have a centroid here and maybe a centroid here. This is maybe x10, uh, okay, and we want to know which centroid to assign this cluster to. We calculate the distance between this item and each of the centroids. So we calculate that distance there and we calculate that distance there, okay. And then what we will do is we will assign that point to whichever centroid is closer. And we saw that in the example in the previous video. Mathematically, we can express that um, step like this. We can say that we're taking the argmen, argmen over all the clusters. And for each of the clusters, I consider the, different, uh, the distance between my point and the centroid for that cluster. We will consider each one of the clusters Okay, from cluster one, cluster two, cluster three, cluster up to big K. I will calculate the distance to that cluster centroid. Okay, here I'm calculating the squared Euclidean distance. And then what I do is I assign that item Xn to the cluster with the closest centroid. 
The question now is, what is the loss that this algorithm is actually um, trying to optimize? Okay, what are we actually trying to do? So what I will do is I will just write down the loss. And as I'm writing, I will talk through the different parts. So let's just consider one of the clusters, cluster little k. What this algorithm is trying to do is it's trying to optimize the distance between each of the items in that cluster and the centroid of that cluster. Okay, um, so basically um, what we're saying here is if you sum up all the distances between each of the items in that cluster, then you want to make that as small as possible. Okay, you want most of the items in my cluster to be close to the cluster centroid. What the algorithm tries to do is it's trying to optimize this, not just for one cluster, but for all of the clusters at the same time. Okay, so for a cluster from um, little k equal to one up to big K. Okay, and that's actually the, the whole loss for the algorithm. What are the parameters of this loss? What are the, the things that we can change in order to make this loss smaller? So let's use J to denote the loss as we've done in previous videos. The things we can change are basically the big C's, okay? Remember that C1, for instance, is the indices of the items assigned to cluster number one. In other words, we can, we can change the cluster assignments, right? We can, we can change which item is assigned to which cluster. And that's captured uh, in um, big C1 up to big C, big K, right? And then the other thing we can change is, of course, the mu's, okay, the centroids. So we can change uh, mu1 up to mu k. And that's the loss that we're trying to optimize. This is the loss that the k-means algorithm tries to optimize. Let's just see how each of the steps here, with inside the iterative loop, how each of these steps actually improves this loss. So step 2a here, right, this is the centroid update step, right? We can uh, write that down. It's the centroid update step, centroid update. What we are doing here is we update um, the mu's, okay, so mu1 up to mu k, while keeping the um, cluster assignments fixed, so while keeping the c's fixed c1 up to ck. Um, we're basically looking at this loss and we're saying um, keep the c's fixed, keep the i in c's, keep that fixed and just change the mu's. Okay, so that's what happens in step 2a in the centroid update step. Step 2b, that's the cluster assignment step. Okay, and what we do here is just the opposite of what we did in um, 2a, right? Here, what we do is we keep the mu's fixed. So all we are updating is the c's, right? So we're updating the assignments of each of my items to the k clusters while keeping the mu's fixed. Keeping mu1 up to mu big k fixed. So in this step, we've got the mu case and they're held fixed. Okay, we don't change, we don't move the, the, the centroids at all. All we're doing is we're reassigning the x's to the closest centroid. Okay, now let's just think about this. In which case will I, um, let's look at one item here. Okay, when will we actually switch it for, to a different centroid from the one it had in the previous iteration? We will only switch it if this squared Euclidean distance is better for another centroid than the one it was assigned to before. Okay, that's the only case when we will switch. And if we do that, that means that basically by definition, this value will get smaller, right? Because for that item, it will be closer to mu k, to the new mu k. Okay, so we will only change from, I don't know, cluster number three to cluster number four if this distance is smaller. So that means that step 2b, if we run step 2b, it's guaranteed to make the loss better, okay, to make the loss go down. So that's step 2b. 
Let's think about step 2a. So now instead of keeping the muse fixed, we're going to update the muse, but we uh, keep the cluster assignments fixed. Okay, so we're not changing which cluster x belongs to, we're just changing the mu for each of the clusters. When we change the mu's, we're moving them closer to um, most of the points in my cluster, right? We're, we're taking the mu's and we're updating it so that it becomes the mean of all the points in my cluster. And that means that on average, it should be closer to the average point in that cluster. So again, step 2a, when I execute that step, this loss is guaranteed to become better, okay, to go down. So we've got an algorithm here that in every, every time we make an update step, whether it's step 2a or step 2b, every time we're making this loss go down. So I hope that convinces you that this is the, the loss we're trying to optimize. I should say that this algorithm um, won't necessarily give you the best possible solution. If I wanted to get the best possible solution for this loss, then I would have had to consider every possible way to assign my training items to the different clusters. Okay, but that's computationally just not possible in, in most realistic um, settings. Okay, so that makes us a bit sad, but at least we've got this algorithm. Okay, and because we are getting an improvement every time we run step 2a and every time we run step 2b, we know that this algorithm will at least lead to a solution which is um, locally optimal. Okay, it might not be the best possible solution, but we know that as we're running it at every step, we're, we're making some improvement in the loss, okay? If we're not making any improvement, then we know we're not changing the cluster assignments, and then we know we can stop the algorithm. There's actually one important thing that influences how good the um, ultimate solution will be. We know that every time we're getting an improvement from steps 2a and steps 2b, but where we start can actually have an effect of where we end up. So what I've done here is I've run k-means clustering on a data set and I ran it two times. And the only thing I changed in these two times is basically the random initial assignment of items to clusters, okay? And then what I've got on this plot as well is the sum of the squared distances, the squared Euclidean distances to the centroids. And you can see that in this solution here, we're getting a value of 68.26. And here in this solution here, we're getting a value of 66.97. And you can see as well that the clustering is actually different. Here, the in this case, the um, k-means clustering um, ended up splitting this kind of grouping into two, while in the second case with the other random initialization, it ended up splitting this group into two. So what you can see here is that different random initializations will uh, lead to different solutions. And importantly, they will also give you different values for the loss. So a practical strategy to do to deal with this is to um, basically run k-means a number of times. Okay, you you run k-means uh, 10 times with different random initializations, and then you keep the solution with the lowest value for the loss. So that, in short, is the k-means clustering algorithm. There are still a few more things to think about. Um, for instance, how do we choose the number of clusters k for a specific problem? There are also more advanced versions of k-means clustering. For example, um, k-means clustering algorithms that look at different ways to initialize the clusters so that you end up with uh, a better end solution. But I hope that um, these videos already gives you a good overview of the fundamentals of k-means so that you can start to use the algorithm.